Hello and welcome back. In our last video, we have seen the importance of data scanning and we tried to avoid unnecessary data scan using partition technique. Today, we will understand the importance of data skipping. Now, data skipping and avoiding unnecessary data scanning is almost same. Today, we will understand the optimization in Delta Lake and we will also understand what is the importance of z-ordering. Now, if you have not seen our previous video, I would recommend you to watch this video first. So, without any delay, let's begin. Now, before we can begin with the code example, let's understand what is data skipping and how Delta Lake optimizes data skipping using z-ordering. Now, if you remember our previous video and the example that we used, we used orders data, wherein we were getting orders from multiple companies and the order numbers were like this, ORD001 and like this, and the order is distributed into multiple parquet files. Now, in our previous example, since we had to search order based on country, so we partitioned the data based on country in order to find out order numbers along with country, right? What if we have only order number but not country? And we know that the order number is a high cardinality column. Now, we cannot partition the order number, right? Because it's a high cardinality column. If we start partitioning the order number, it will create multiple partitions and again, the query will lag because of multiple partitions. So, to prevent this issue, Delta Lake implements something called Z-ordering. Now, if you understand Z-ordering properly, consider we have data spread in three parquet files wherein the data is from multiple countries. Now, it can be from India, USA, Australia. Now, the order IDs for each of the data is distributed in multiple parquet files, right? Now, consider you have to search for an order called ORD1001. Now, we know this is in parquet file 1. Since we cannot implement any partition technique on the order ID column, we have to scan all the files in order to find out this order ID. Now, how we can optimize this using Z-order? Consider you have stored this data in a Delta Lake table. Now, to optimize this with Z-order, you will run a query where you will specify that you have to Z-order this table by order ID. And once you do that, what will happen in the background is, all the data for that particular order ID column will be first sorted and then distributed in different files. So, if you see for the first table, once you jet order by order ID, it will distribute the data in sequential orders. So, the first file will contain the data from 1001 to 1004. Similarly, for second file, it will be from 1005 to 1008 and the third file will get the next two. And once this is done, Delta Lake will store this data in its metadata. So, whenever you will try to find a particular order, so it will know which particular file has this data. So, it can skip the rest other two files. So, consider you are searching for order 1006. In that case, it will straight go to the second partition because it knows that the second partition contains the data from 1005 to 1008. So, it will skip the first file and the third file and it will only scan the second parquet file. And in this way, Delta Lake implements Z-ordering by data skipping. Now, consider you want to search data by country. In place of partition, you can also Z-order the data by country. In that case, the data will again be shorted and distributed in different files. So, you can see as per the data distribution, the Australia is in the first file, India is in the second file and USA is in the third file, right? So, as soon as you search for a country equals to IN, it will straight go to the second parquet file. It will not go to the first parquet file, okay? Now, Z-ordering is on multidimensional as well. It means you can implement Z-ordering on more than one columns as well. Okay, now consider you implement the Z order by country and order ID because in your search query you have conditions like where country equals to Australia and order ID equals to some order ID, right? In that case, how Z ordering will be implemented? So, if you see the data is distributed into multiple parquet files. Now, since this is based on two columns, the data will be distributed into multiple parquet files. So, here first the country data will be sorted and then the order ID will be sorted. So, if you see the Australia data is sorted with the order ID where the first two records are in the first two files, the third record is in the third file. Similarly, for India, you can see the order 1001 is in the second file, order 1005 is in the third file, order 1006 is in the fourth file, Similarly, 1010 in the fifth file, right? But the order ID is still sorted and the country is still sorted. Right Now, as soon as you put these columns in the predicate or the filter condition, it will straight go to that particular file in order to read that data. And this is how Z-ordering is being implemented. Now, don't worry. If you are getting confused with this one, don't worry about it. We will see this with a live example. Now, I am in my Databricks Community Edition. Now, if you don't know how to log in into Community Edition, you can go back and watch our previous video. I have shown the steps that you can follow in order to enroll for Community Edition. Now, the data set that we are going to use today is retail data that you can find in this location in the community edition. I have copied the same sales data to a particular location in my Databricks. So, if I show you the data, 
This is a CSV file which contains sales data, which contains some columns like invoice number, stock description, country, customer ID, etc. Okay. And I am going to read this data and write it in form of delta because we are going to perform optimization on delta table in order to see the Z order and the optimize commands, right? So I have rewritten this data with a partition of 16 so that we can split the files into 16 files. And I've written this to a particular location, which is sales delta. Okay. Let me show you the delta table first. So I'll run the select star command. Great. You can see the data, right? It contains invoice number, stock, description, quantity, and some columns like customer ID and country. And this is all a delta table. Okay. Now, before we can go ahead, let me show you the location where the data is written. So this is the location where the sales delta is present, right? So let me run this as well. Now you can see that we have total 16 files in this location. And this is because I've repartitioned the data in order to make sure that we have more number of files and each of the file size is quite small. Okay. Now, before we can go ahead and optimize this, let's go ahead and search for a particular invoice number in this table. So I'll copy one of the invoice number from the top. So let me just go ahead and copy this one. So I'll copy this and we will write our SQL query in order to find out that invoice number. Okay. To do that, I'll write select star from sales delta where invoice number is equals to and I'll put the invoice number. So let me run this. Awesome. We get the data for that invoice number. So we have more than one stock code and the quantity for that invoice number. Okay. Now let's go ahead and see what has happened in the background. To do that, I'll open the compute tab. I'll get inside the cluster and to the Spark UI and then in the SQL data frame tab. Okay. Here's the query that we just ran. So I'll open this and I'll expand this. So if I expand this, if I scroll to bottom, you can see the number of files read. This is 16. And this is because delta table does not know where this invoice number lies. It can lie in any of the 16 files. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what are the minimum and the maximum invoice number for each of the files so that we understand that how the data is right now present. Okay. To do that, what I'll do is I'll write one more SQL query. So for that, I'll write select minimum of invoice number and maximum of invoice number and we will use one column which is hidden which is called metadata in order to find the file name okay and we'll use the dot net notation because this metadata column is a json column so we'll use dot file name in order to get the file name okay from sales delta and we will group by and i'll copy the same column because we'll group by file name in order to see the minimum and maximum invoice number and we'll order by minimum invoice number. So I'll copy this and let me run this. Okay, we got the data. Now if you see this data is overlapping, it means you don't know which invoice number will lie in which of the files. Okay, all the files start from the same minimum invoice number and ends on a different max invoice number. So it does not segregate the data in between the files and the data is not distributed properly. The data is uneven distributed in all of the files. Okay. So let's go ahead and optimize this data using Z ordering technique. Okay. And before we do that, we need to see one of the configuration, which is very important related to Z ordering. So let me just show it to you. This is Spark Databricks Delta Optimize Max File Size. Now the default value for this is 1 GB and what exactly this is. This explains that if you try to optimize the delta table, it will try to pack as much as data with the maximum size of 1 GB. Okay. So consider you have data of 1.2 GB. If you try to optimize the table, delta table will optimize this in two files. The first file will be of 1 GB and the second file will be of 200 MB. Okay. Now, since we have very less data, we will try to play around with this configuration in order to make sure that we have many more files in order to see how Z ordering is working. Else, it will try to pack all the data in one file. So, we'll not be able to see what is happening in Z ordering. Okay. So, we'll play around with this configuration now. So, let me just copy this configuration from here and I'll go back and we'll set this to 64 MB. Okay. So, our file size would be maximum of 64 MB. So, to do that, I'll write spa dot conf dot set and we'll set to, to 64 MB. To do that, I'll write 64 into 1024 and into 8 because this is in bytes. Okay. So this will make sure that the maximum file size for our optimization will be of maximum 64 MB. Okay. So let me just run this. Okay. This completed. Now let's go ahead and optimize our table. To do that, I'll write SQL and I'll write optimize and the table name, which is sales delta. 
and then we will write Z order by the column which is invoice number. Okay, let me run this. Okay, so it has some metrics that you can go ahead and see. And let me just go ahead and copy the previous query for our minimum and maximum invoice number. So I'll copy this and I'll paste it here in the bottom and let me rerun this query now. Awesome. Now, if you see the invoice numbers are not overlapping, it means if you see the first one, the end max number is 539259 and the starting of the second one is 539259. Similarly, the end is 541784 and the starting of the third one is 541784. And you can see all the part files in sequence. Okay. And similarly, the data is arranged in sequence as well. So, what has happened in the background is Delta has got all the invoice number, arranged it in sequence order, and then distributed in different part files. Okay. So, our data is now Z ordered. Let's go ahead and run that same SQL query in order to see what time it takes in order to find that particular invoice number now. So to do that, I'll rerun this query. And if you see, it just finished, okay? So it was so fast. Let me just go back to the cluster details. So our previous query took around three seconds, okay? Now, let me refresh the SQL and data frame tab and open the latest query. Scroll down to the bottom for the scan parquet. And if I go here, now if you see the number of files read is one. So it has only read that particular parquet file which is having that invoice number because it knows by sequence which parquet file contains that invoice number. Okay. And it has completed in 0 0.5 seconds. So you can understand the optimization that has happened for a high cardinality column in Delta table. Okay. Now let's go and check the metrics as well. So I'll just go back and this is our optimized command that we ran. So let me just expand this metrics. So if you see this metrics, so if we see the number of files added is 16 and removed is 16. And if you scroll down, the importance is this Z order stats. Okay. It captures all the stats for your Z ordering in this particular information. Okay. Now, since we have done this based on invoice number, let's go ahead and optimize this now on multidimensional. So what we'll do is we'll add one more column called country and we'll see what happens to it. Okay. So I'll add country column here in the Z ordering and I'll rerun this. Okay. Now, in this time, if you expand the metrics, you can see the number of files added were 16. So there are some different logic that happened this time. Let's go ahead and see what happened in the background. So I'll copy the same query again. And this time we'll add country in the query. Okay. Because we added country. So I'll just add country column here. And we will group by by country as well, along with the file name in order to see what has happened. Okay. And we will order by country and minimum invoice number. So let me rerun this query. Awesome. Now if you see. We have Australia, Austria and all of the country details and for each of the country, the minimum and the maximum invoice number is separated in different part files. Okay, so you, if you see for Australia, the minimum and maximum invoice number is this and this is in part 005. Okay, and similarly, after 5394419, it is 540267 for Australia, which is in part 01. Okay, now all of the data is in different files and for Australia, it has distributed the data in different part files. Okay, now the important thing to notice here is once you start adding more and more number of columns in Z order, this data will get distributed in more and more number of files. So it is very important that you decide what would be the Z order. So what if now you rerun this query, select query without country filter. Okay, so we'll not use country filter, but we have done the Z order by country. So we'll rerun this again. Okay, so let me rerun this. So it has completed. Let me just go back to the cluster detail, refresh the Spark data frame and let me just go to this. And if I scroll down to bottom and I expand this, number of file read is 2. So if you see, it has to read more number of files because we have added Australia as well in Z order. Okay. Let's go ahead and put Australia in the filter condition and see what happens. Okay. So I'll go back and in this invoice number, I'll change the invoice number, which is for Australia and I'll add a country and country equals to Australia. Okay, I'll just make it in single quotes. And I'll rerun this query. Awesome, this query completed. Okay, let me just go back to the cluster and refresh the SQL and data frame tab. So this is the one I'll just open this. So this completed in 0 0.5 seconds now. Okay. And if I expand this and go down. So if you see the number of file rate again became one. Okay. So it is very important that you select your Z orders properly. Okay. You cannot just blindly put any column as Z order and start searching for other columns. So it will create problem. So you have to select the correct orders for Z order. Okay. Now that we are already using country in the filter condition, is there a better way to do it? The answer is yes. We can use the combination of partition and Z ordering. So we can partition the table based on country 
and then we can z out the data based on invoice number so in that case our performance will be much more better because we don't have to z order the whole data based on country now okay so i have already created one table called sales data partition so this is again a data table partitioned on country but we have not optimized it yet so let me just quickly show you the data so i'll use dbutils.fs.ls and i'll put the location uh, so let me just paste it here so i'll put it here and i'll quickly do a display so that we can see it better. Awesome. Now, if you see, this is a partition data where we have country equals to Australia. Okay. So let me just copy the first one, Australia one, so that we can see the number of files inside each partition. Okay. So I'll just place it here and I'll run this. Awesome. In Australia, you can see there are almost 16 files. Okay. This is a delta table and this is a partition delta table. Okay. So let's go ahead and optimize this table now. Okay. So before I optimize this, let me just run this query and see the performance first. So I'll run this. And this query completed in almost three seconds. So let me just go back to the SQL data frame and open the latest query, which says three seconds as total. And if I open this, scroll down, you can see the number of partition read is one because it is reading the Australia partition and the number of files is 16. Okay. So let's go ahead and optimize this table. To do that, I'll just scroll down to bottom and we will use a filter condition if we want to select the partition Australia. Okay. So consider we only want to Z order the data for Australia. So in that case, we can use a filter condition called where country equals to Australia. And if we want to Z order the whole table and optimize it for all the partitions, then we cannot use the selective one. Okay. Let's do it only for Australia. So I'll put a filter condition, optimize the table name with country equals to Australia. Now you need to be very sure if you put a where condition, your table needs to be partitioned based on that column. Okay. Since our table is partitioned on country, I'll put country equals to Australia and I'll run this. Okay, now the selective optimization zero ordering is complete. So if we expand the metrics, you can see the number of file added as one and removed from 16. Okay, so if I go back, I run the same query again. So if I run this now, this completed in 1.52 seconds. Okay, previously it took three seconds. Now let me just go back and refresh the SQL data frame tab. And if I open this, go to the bottom and expand. Now, if you see the number of file read is also one the number of partition read is also one. Okay, so we have optimized in order to make sure that only one file would be read and only one partition would be read. So this is data skipping at its best. So now you can understand how you can combine multiple techniques like partitioning, Z ordering in order to make sure that your delta table is completely optimized and your data scanning is also optimized. So these are some of the Z ordering techniques that you can use in order to optimize your delta table. Now, if you want to learn more about it, there is a documentation by the Delta IO. You can find it here all about Delta optimization. And all of this is there in this documentation. You can go ahead and check this out. I'll put this link in the description of the video. Now, before we wrap up, there's one more thing we need to discuss is auto compaction. Okay. By default, Delta table provides this auto compaction in which the optimize means small files will be automatically compacted. Okay. But the data will not be Z ordered. Z order is something that you have to specifically provide as instructions. But optimization or optimization when we say is the compaction means smaller files would be combined into one can be done by auto compaction as well. Okay. This feature is available from Delta Lake 3.1.0. Okay, you can go ahead and check this out from this documentation. If you like my content, make sure to subscribe and like. Please put down your feedbacks in the comment section. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.